Hi, Facebook viewers. We're live here at Washington University in St. Louis for the second presidential debate. It's going to be a very interesting evening, of course. Donald Trump dealing with the fallout from that video where we heard him making lewd comments about women. We know that several Republicans on Capitol Hill have pulled their support for the Republican nominee. And President Obama speaking out today saying that he believes Donald Trump is insecure and he's confident that Hillary Clinton will win this election. He said he's confident but not overconfident and Democrats had a lot have a lot of work to do. Let's take a look around this area here. This is Spin Alley. Everyone's getting ready for the debate tonight. Now, there's something else I want to talk about. We are just 10 miles from Ferguson, Missouri. Of course, two years ago, where an 18-year-old African-American, Michael Brown, was shot and killed by a white police officer. That reignited the Black Lives Matter movement. And, uh, you know, we really have seen a lot since that happened. And I talked to some people here on campus about this, some professors who were actively involved with the Black Lives Matter campaign at the time. They say that they are going to support Hillary Clinton tonight. And they say that they would like to hear more from the candidates on this issue. I also interviewed the president of Blue Lives Matter New York when I was in New York for the first presidential debate and we talked about this issue then as well and, and he says that he's not sure who he's supporting yet. Uh, we know that the Fraternal Order of Police has endorsed Donald Trump. He says that he feels like people need to take more accountability when they're dealing with police and that's what's creating a lot of these tense moments from his perspective. We want to mention of course that Darren Wilson was not indicted by a grand jury uh, in the shooting death of Michael Brown. And we're going to actually take a walk now and, and talk to some people from Facebook that are here because, uh, you know, we're on Facebook Live and they have some very interesting statistics. So as we go along, you're going to see all of the different media crews getting set up for tonight's second presidential debate. Let's go. can see it's not an easy path we're taking. Now, before we make our way over to Facebook, I do want to address one more thing. Of course, we looked into how the presidential candidates feel about uh, the issue uh, of Ferguson, uh, you know, being so close and, and what they feel about uh, race relations. And so when it comes to Donald Trump, you heard him in the first presidential debate talk about supporting stop and frisk. And, you know, he also said that he believes community relations um, with the black community are really important, as well as restoring law and order. We've heard him say that so many times on the campaign trail that he wants to restore law and order. When it comes to Hillary Clinton during the first debate, we heard her say that she believes we have a problem with systemic racism in our nation. She also said that she would like to see us restore trust between police and people of color and that she would like to reform gun laws. So a little bit about where the candidates stand when it comes to racial tensions and, and that issue. Um, and we hope to hear more about that tonight. I can tell you, of course, that on this campus, so close to Ferguson, that many of the students and um, also the professors here are hoping Hoping that that's addressed this evening. So let's make our way over to Facebook. Hi there. We're actually here to see Katie. She's already waiting for us. Hi, Katie. How's it going? Hi, great. How are you? Thanks so much for making time for us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Facebook, here's Katie with Facebook. <laughs> so you already have us queued up. Tell me what we're looking at here. Absolutely. Well, to start off, just to let you know, we've seen a lot of conversation happening on Facebook. So since January 1st, 109 million unique people have had 5.3 billion likes, posts, comments, and shares about the candidates and the issues. And That's then you look at a lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. And when you look in the last 48 hours, you look at two of the things that are in the news the most. Uh, Mr. Trump's The Tape from 2005. In the last 48 hours, 8.9 million people have been having 30 million interactions about that. Um, and then, um, and then with WikiLeaks, you see that there's been about three million people having about 9.3 million interaction. So these are some of the biggest stories that we've been seeing on Facebook. People, people talking about. And then when you drill down into the candidates. You can look, so over the last 30 days, um, 50 million people have 
been talking about Mr. Trump. And you see spikes around the first debate and then here again around the second debate. Wow, this is really cool, you know, getting to see an inside look at the analytics and, um, you know, like you just mentioned, this, this is a lot of conversation, um, especially over the past few days. Um, you know, it is the weekend and, and people Absolutely. are still involved, which is kind of neat. Show me a little bit more about, uh, you know, what we have going here. Absolutely. So if we look then at um, Secretary Clinton, she's had 43 million people talking about her over the last 30 days. And she's also seen spikes in conversation also around the first debate. Um, and it's starting to trend upward here um, this weekend and going into the second debate. And then if you also look at the top issues, so over the last 30 days, taxes for the first time has now appeared in the top five. Um, most of that conversation centered around Mr. Trump's taxes, starting from the first debate and then the New York Times story last weekend. Of course, yeah. And we see some of these other issues here, ones that we expect to kind of hear a little bit more about in tonight's debate, uh, you know, for our viewers, racial issues, the economy, crime and criminal justice, government ethics, uh, all things that, you know, we probably all see our friends and, and loved ones and including colleagues talking about on Facebook. Um, you know, this pretty exciting you being here tonight. Tell me what it's like, uh, everyone coming over asking you questions about the analytics behind Facebook. It's so awesome. I mean, Facebook's really become the new town hall and the amount of conversation that we're seeing here. The use of Facebook Live, our, our lounge space here is really set up so that anybody that's going live on Facebook can come in, see our analytics, kind of go live right from our space. And um, the amount of conversation is just really interesting to see. And we're really excited to see what comes out of tonight. So what do you guys do during the debate? You know, I mean, are, are you are you perusing Facebook? Uh, you know, how, how is that for you? We're doing a couple of different things. We're certainly going to be looking at what is the conversation that's happening? What are gonna, What's going to be the top moment, social moment that people are talking about? What are the top issues? How much are people talking about the candidates? Because we'll release that data as soon as the debate is over. And then usually overnight we'll be able to have bigger conversation numbers to know exactly how many people and interactions they were having about the debate. All right. Well, Katie, thank you so much for taking all this time, showing us uh, everything you have here. And we hope to meet up with you uh, possibly at the next debate and maybe even later on today to find Sounds out what's good. going on on Facebook. So okay. Take Thanks care so and much. thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys, we're going to go for a little bit of a further walk now, saying goodbye to our friends at Facebook. I want to give you a look inside this area. This is where all of the media are for tonight's debate. And you can see everyone's really working pretty hard right now. This is crunch time as everyone's getting ready. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement here tonight because people really just don't know what's going to happen. I don't think any of us have covered anything quite like this. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about tonight's debate as well, about the format. This is a town hall style debate. It's going to be very different than what we've seen in the first presidential debate. There's no podium, right? So these candidates are going to be able to walk around freely. So body language is going to be really important in this debate. And the candidates are going to be taking questions from viewers. So they're going to have to possibly answer some very difficult questions directly from a passionate, undecided voters. And that's certainly a lot different than answering a political question from a, a moderator from a, a network news so you know I think we're going to be watching closely to see how the candidates react to this we're going to be considering what Hillary Clinton is going to do when it comes to slamming Donald Trump on the news that's come out in the past few days regarding the video and those lewd comments so there's a lot up in the air tonight um, and you know that's partly why you can see everyone with their heads down uh, really intently working uh, this weekend ahead of this debate so we actually have something really fun we want to show you uh, being here in St. Lewis, we have a little bit of beer history. So we're going to have to take a, a walk to get there. So come with us, and I think you'll be excited to see what's next. All right, you can see we're kind of behind the scenes in this stairwell, making our, our quick exit. Uh, I can give you a, a little bit of a preview of what we're coming upon in case anyone out there uh, is excited about beer, which I'm assuming many of you uh, might be watching football today, uh, having a, a good time and tuning in you know, to catch a little bit more info about uh, the debates. But we're heading somewhere where there's going to be beer and Clydesdale. So uh, it doesn't get any more uh, interesting than that, especially when it comes to presidential debates. Uh, so we're going to head this way and let's give you a look. We see our buddy over there, Rudy. We met up with him earlier and he's agreed to give us some information about why we have these Clydesdales out here and what they're doing here. Um, and let's see. Rudy's actually taking some photos, so he's going to be ready to talk with us in a minute. But uh, he's 
working everything out here. We'll give you a little bit of a look around first. You can see several of the Clydesdales here. One of the things that we noticed that we thought was really cool, check this out. They actually have their own debate credential. And we thought that was really fun when we saw that earlier. These are just some beautiful Clydesdales. So we're gonna come over to Rudy. He's, he's He is working right now. You know, he's helping everyone that's coming over that wants to meet the Clydesdales and take photos with them. So we'll have to bear with him as he's kind of in the middle of everything. Hey, Rudy, how's it Good going? Good to see you. You're joining our um, Facebook Live right awesome. now with all of our news viewers across the country. Thanks for so having us. I want you to answer, why are you guys here, first of all? This is St. Louis, uh, rich history. Tell us about that. Certainly. Well, Anheuser-Busch has been part of the debates for like the last 30 years. So since we're here in our hometown, obviously, we're going to bring the Clydesdales here. This is actually the first time that all the Budweiser Clydesdales have been here on site where the debate has been held. So we're just honored to be here and help celebrate. Right, tell me a little bit about this guy. What's his well, name? Who is, is he? King. Okay. And he's about 2,000 pounds. He is actually one of our traveling Clydesdales that's on our traveling team. We've got three teams that travel. We're based out of St. Louis here. And then we have a team in, uh, on the East Coast and a team on the West Coast. We travel about 300 days a year. Each week we are in a new city, just tra taking the horses all over, doing all different various events mm -hmm. like NASCAR races, events like this, uh, a lot of military yeah. events, huge. But there's a huge support for the military. And, and Rudy, we know that there's a story that involves Anheuser Bush and the White House. Fill us in on that. Absolutely. Well, we talk about American icons, and these truly are. These horses actually started back in 1933 when August Bush Sr. actually got them gifted from his son as a gift to celebrate the repeal of Prohibition. And then they actually delivered the first case of post-Prohibition brewed Budweiser right to the White House with the same, not the exact same Clydesdales, but with <laughs> the wagon that's behind us, a 7,000 pound Studebaker wagon that actually still today that we use to drive these horses on. And now we actually bring a Budweiser right off the back of the, we can pour Budweiser right off the back of the wagon and we have a keg cooler in it and so we serve ice cold Budweiser right off the back. Okay. Well, you know, I feel like they kind of, does he want a little bit of credit for delivering the first uh, pro, he, he uh, after Prohibition beer? Certainly. He's <laughs> We're going to have to say hi they to him. People. Everyone's been coming over here all day, right? Like yeah. you are the center of attention. I don't even yeah. know how the you're kind of, uh, yeah. yeah, well. They're a crowd <laughs> You know, they truly are gentle down. It's a lot of uh -huh. people aren't able to see them up close and personal. They just see them on TVs right. and stuff. I mean, they're, they're they really are. big, they you are. know? They are. Um, so I can see why they, they don't get out and about as often. They have a very calm demeanor, and so it works great for them. That's actually why they were chosen for, why they chose them for what we do is mm -hmm. because they love people and they're just so naturally calm and, and they're very elegant and beautiful, you know, with the, the white blaze and the four white socks and it's kind of the same tradition, quality that goes into brewing our Budweiser's, what care that goes into the Clydesdales. And I know that there, I hear there's some beer actually in the tent behind us. So uh, we're, we're assuming there's some Budweiser in there for everyone that's Absolutely. here at the debate that isn't working like us. Um, you know, Rudy, what is it like traveling uh, with these beautiful Clydesdales and, you know, being here, this is something different for you, right? I mean, Absolutely. politics. We don't uh, do a presidential debate every week. <laughs> so this is very exciting for us. You know, it's very rewarding for us as, you know, we're called Clydesdale handlers to be able to go around the country and actually get to take these horses to people to get to see them up close and personal you know that's very rewarding for us because they they just never never they're, they're so crowd pleasers you know they just love people and so to be able to do this in our hometown you know uh, it's very very rewarding for us and have people see what we do on a daily basis and the, the rich history that Budweiser has uh, we just love it. And Rudy is actually originally from Iowa, so we want to give a shout out to our TV station there, KCRG. And uh, he lives now here in St. Louis and travels, he said, 300 days a year with these beautiful Clydesdales. So, you know, we, we have to thank you so much for taking time to show off. Uh, let's see. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's a good look you gave us. Uh, show off these beautiful Clydesdales. And we're probably going to take a little bit of a walk around and show off yours some of the yeah, other certainly. guys As that you are walk here. Around, this is actually a portable stable setup that we okay. travel with. And so sometimes when we don't have stables, we actually put up this whole setup wherever we're at. So we never. Sometimes we're at a, like in Key West, we were right on the Navy base on okay. the runway for the air sh uh, Blue Angel Air Show or Very wherever cool. it may be, baseball games and stuff. And so this is the whole setup. And like I said, there's three teams that travel 
travel like this all around the country. So watch him for a city near you. We just may be there. <laughs> that would be great, yeah. King may be there too. <laughs> well, King is awesome. I've got to ask you about something. I noticed when we went around that all of these Clydesdales have their own basically like media passes. They Tell do. me about how, it, you know, dealing with all the security uh, for a, a, you know, debate, a presidential debate where, where there's so much Secret Service here. Did you have to actually, you know, have all the Clydesdales inspected and everything before they came well, in? Well, yeah, actually, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of preparation that went into make this happen. So shout out to everybody behind the scenes on that. He is and ready. Look at that face. Yeah. That is a face that's ready. <laughs> we had actually a Secret Service in here last night about 11 o'clock doing a sweep with all the horses and all their supplies and everything. And so they had to clear their pass. And this morning we left. We had a uh, one of Clydesdale on Fox and Friends this morning, and we went through the gate, and they actually scanned his media badge, as well as Clyde, our <laughs> Dalmatian. He has one as well. Yeah, we'll have to take a look for him, Facebook viewers. We haven't seen him. He is around here. He they have a beautiful Dalmatian. Uh, so we'll have to say bye to you guys. One, one last pet here, if that's all right. Enjoy the debate, buddy. <laughs> I think King is ready for ice cold <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Rudy. Yeah, Pleasure to talk TV with you. Absolutely. All right, Facebook viewers, I'm, I'll give you another look around here. Our Clydesdales. Aren't these some beautiful, beautiful Clydesdales? I feel like since we looked at the Clydesdales and, and I teased about the beer, that we have to at least give you all a little look inside the beer tent. I, I haven't been in there today, obviously, since I've been running around uh, doing television, but figure we'll give you a look inside at what everyone's up to in there. All right, here we go. So if you really want the behind the scenes, this is what uh, the folks that, you know, might not be intimately involved or may be intimately involved with the debate uh, working here in some capacity uh, are up to. You know, I, looking around the room right now without naming any names, I can see some high profile political operatives uh, as, as well as members of the media um, that obviously, hopefully aren't heading off to a live shot anytime soon. But just a quick look here and we're going to head back out. All right, here he is. We said that there was going to be an adorable Dalmatian that was part of, uh, you know, the team here with all these Clydesdales, and there he is. So if there's anything uh, more lovely to sort of uh, leave you with, it would be the sight of this beautiful dog. And, you know, he looks like he's resting up, getting ready for the debate, and uh, hopefully all of you at home are kind of doing the same thing. I know that it's going to be a night uh, that so many Americans are interested in hearing from both uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in this second presidential debate a night when there's so much happening in the world of politics and you know we're going to find out how the candidates handle it so uh, reporting from st louis missouri at the second presidential debate i'm jacqueline Castro.